So let us imagine that we have two particles along an axis. Okay, so we have M1 at the origin, and then we have M2 somewhere along the x-axis that is a little bit away, let's say a distance D from the origin, okay? So we have arbitrarily chosen the origin of an x-axis to coincide with the particle mass m1, right? So if we have this system set up, so we're going to call this the y-axis and this the x-axis, then the position of the center of mass, so we're going to write this term down, the center of mass, or we'll also refer to it as the COM, is just x COM is equal to m2 times the distance from the origin divided by m1 plus m2. All right, so this is the definition that we have for the center of mass. And center of mass would be somewhere around here, okay? So this is the center of mass. And suppose that, uh, let's just take an example. Suppose that m2 equals zero in this case. So then there's only one particle of mass m1 and the center of mass must then lie at the point of that particle. So if we look back at the equation, that means that x center of mass would equal m2 times d divided by m1 plus m2. And since m2 is zero, that just means that the x center of mass equals zero, which reduces to the situation that we would expect because the center of mass must lie at the position of m1, which is exactly x equals zero. Now, if we consider another case where let's say m1 equals m2, then we should expect the center of mass to be about halfway in between them since they have equal mass. So after calculating the x center of mass, we get m2 times d plus m1 plus m2, and this simply reduces to m2 times d divided by 2m2, and this is just equal to d over 2, which is the halfway point between them. Now also realize that we are not required to place the origin of the coordinate system on one of the particles. For the problem that I just gave you, it just happens to be that m1 is on the uh, origin of the coordinate system. So for a more generalized situation, we define the center of mass as x center of mass equals m1 times x1 plus m2 times x2 divided by m1 plus m2. And for the problem above, m1, uh, for m1, x1 would just equal 0 and x2 would be d. All right, so we can rewrite this equation as m1 x1 plus m2 times x2 divided by m, where um, m is the total mass of both particles, m1 plus m2. Okay, so if we extend this equation to a more general situation, where let's say there are n particles stretched out along the x-axis, okay, then that means the total mass would be like m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus all the way until mn, okay? So what that means, the center of mass along the x-axis of these particles would be m1 times the position of m1 plus m2 times the position of m2 plus all the way to mn times the position of mn, and then we divide it by the total mass. Mm -hmm. And this basically just tells us that the center of mass is equal to 1 over m times the sum of 
the mass of each particle times the position of each particle. And this is basically simply like a weighted average, right? Okay, so this is just for the x center of mass, but if we generalize it to all three dimensions, we get the x center of mass equals 1 over m times the sum of the mass and the position products. And then the y center of mass is very similar. It's just in the y direction. So for all particles, we multiply the mass by the y position and the same exact case for the z axis. If we're working in three dimensions, it would just be times the z position. And this also allows us to define the center of mass with the language of vectors. So we're going to recall that the position of a particle at, say, coordinates x i, y i, and z i um, is just given by a position vector. We're going to call that r i with a vector sign. It's just multiplying it, sorry, multiplying it by the unit vectors, right? For this particle that we're calling i here. So now we can rewrite the center of mass as a vector using the same exact notation that we just did. The center of mass as a vector just becomes the sum of all the center of masses in their respective directions. And we're going to show that direction with the unit vector symbols. So now if we can write it more concisely, we get that this equals 1 over m times the sum of all of the masses multiplied by their respective position vectors. And that is how we get the representation of the center of mass and vector notation. And recall here that m is the total mass of the system. And you can check that this equation is correct by substituting the um, previous vector equations that we just wrote over here into this equation to check that it's correct. And then you can separate out the x, y, and z components. And um, the scalar relations that we wrote down over here will come out of that equation. So you can recheck that that holds true. So that is how you calculate the center of mass for a system of particles. In the next video, we're going to be showing you how to calculate the center of mass for a solid body where we don't have discrete particles, but rather individual sections of a body that we will look at.